And this is pretty sweet. Now watch as we blend in those highlights really nicely. Then we'll start to add some color into that mix and blend that color perfectly into the face and watch how those highlight areas are just fixed very quickly and very easily. Wow, that's insane with the selective color tool. Now you know that one of my favorite tools in Photoshop is the selective color adjustment layer. And earlier this week, I was messing around experimenting like I tell you to do actually. And I experimented with the absolute values of the selective color adjustment layer in terms of tonal values. And I was shocked, I mean shocked by what I was able to do with highlight blowouts or hotspots, particularly in uh, portrait photography, but you can also use this on landscapes as well. So let's jump in, I'll show you exactly how this works. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use the selective color adjustment layer. Now, if you've ever used this adjustment layer before, this selective color adjustment layer is a way for you to control C, M, Y, so your cyan, magenta, and yellow, in any given color, or, which I don't really show very often, any individual tonal value. Now, not only can you add cyan, magenta, or yellow to the image of any color, or even the tonal values, you can also do it for red, green, and blue, but you have to know how these sliders work in order to do that. So I'm gonna throw up a graphic here. So as I work with this, you'll kind of see exactly what direction you're gonna get when you do this, because what we're gonna be doing on this portrait is we're kind of gonna be like painters. We first need to fill in these hot spots where the light has hit just a little bit too harshly. Yes, we do want highlights on our portraits. Please don't uh, misconstrue the idea of what I'm getting across here. Highlights do help with uh, showing depth in a face so that you can see the differentiation between highlight and shadow. There, but there are times where that highlight becomes a hot spot and becomes almost a distraction. So that's what we're going to do to fix this. Now to do this, you're going to need to be in the absolute values and not relative values. So essentially what relative value does is let's say for instance, there is 50% of the color blue in the image, okay? And you move one of these sliders, let's say 10%. It's going to relatively look at the amount of data that is available in that color and add in the percentage that you put towards it, but it's gonna be done in a relative value. So what relative means is that it's gonna work slower. So if you increase by 10% to add more blue, you might actually only be adding 5%, maybe even 4%. It's a slow process with relative. Absolute, on the other hand, is basically saying, hey, if you add 10% of a color to a color or 10% of a color to a tonal value, I'm going to give you that 10%. I'm not going to restrict it by the color or data that's available within the image. So in order to fix these hotspots, we need to make sure that we're in the whites, okay, because these are white. So when we go into the whites, what we want to do first is set the tonal value of that. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to take this black value here and we're going to add a little bit of black to that white to basically offset that white. Now we want to take it to a point where it actually starts to look kind of bad because this is where we're going to start adding in the color. So what I did here was I just increased this and that I don't want to go this far because then we start to see actual black on her face and it looks like she rubbed her face in charcoal or someone smothered it in charcoal. Either way, that's not very nice. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move it this way to the left until we reduce that kind of uh, hazy kind of look that we have over the, the highlights there. We do want it to look like this. We'll taper it down in a second, and I'll show you that. Now, the face does have color value in it. So what we need to do here, I'm gonna go to the yellows, and I'm gonna start moving this over until I get a yellow that I think looks about right for her complexion. Then I need to add red to it because it's starting to look a little bit like orange. Like not only did she get her face rubbed in charcoal, it's now been rubbed in Doritos. So I'm gonna go to this cyan and just move this over and dang, look at that. Like we have almost her exact facial complexion, the color complexion that she should have in those highlight areas. Now, again, like I said, I know highlights are there for a reason. We'll get back to that, but let's add a little bit of magenta in there just a teeny tad bit of magenta in there. And now we can see as we zoom in that those areas that did have highlight value are now almost perfect skin complexion. Now this is not something that I would make an action for because you really can't action this because all skin tones are different. But watch what happens as I move this over to the left now. So now that we've got this to its highest peak of where we want that white to be and added the color that we want to add to that, I'm gonna move this white to the left until I start to incorporate some of those highlights back into the image. Okay, now you can either do it that way or you can come over to opacity and drop the opacity of this to let some of that highlight value mix in. 
So here's the before, lots of hot spots with that, with that light, almost makes her skin feel a little oily. Now when we add this, we do still have a nice highlight transition, but we have skin tonal value placed on top of it, almost like we put makeup on our face. And again, you can adjust the black point here by reducing this or come over to the opacity and drop this down as well to get a little bit of a mix of the best of both worlds. Now I will say, because this is dealing with the whites, we do have to look at her eyes and we might have to go in here with the mask, be for our brush tool and brush out with black in areas where we don't want this to be, okay? We don't want this to be in these areas because then, well, that's her eyes and we don't want yellowing in the eyes or she might look like a zombie that then got her face rubbed into charcoal and Doritos. <laughs> She looks pretty good now. I'm going to say I kind of like that. Now, this does work with all types of skin tones. So even with darker complexions, we could come in here to the selective color adjustment layer. We could then bring up the black amount so we can start to taper away that highlight area that we have those hot spots on. Add a little bit of yellow here and then come in here and mix in a little bit of that red and then a slight bit of that magenta. And you can see that we're starting to get that complexion through the color choices that we're using on those highlights. Now for this one, he's on a white background. So what do we do? It's gonna change some things here. So let's get rid of that distraction first. So I'll select the background layer, go to select, go to subject, get a good selection for my subject, okay? And because I have this subject selected, I wanna invert that. So the way you can invert any selection is press Command or Control, Shift and I, and that will invert that selection. Then I can come over to the mask, just click on that mask and press control I to invert that from a, a white to a black mask, which will then make sure that that doesn't exist. Now, this is again happening on his face. So what do we want to do here? Well, we want to, we do want some of that highlight area, like I said, so we either reduce that amount of white that we have or black in the white area that we have, or come to the opacity and drop that opacity to blend the best of both worlds. Now, for instance, it's also going to affect teeth. So we might have to press B for our brush tool and then brush on here with black to brush away any of the white areas where we did not want this effect to be. Now, this effect can also be used on landscapes. So for this image, if we wanted to take our highlight here that has this very bright white kind of highlight to it, we don't necessarily want to do the same concept that we would do with a portrait. With a landscape, what I would do with this is I would go into the selective color adjustment layer here and then go into the whites. I'm going to increase this black amount in the white to make that a darker amount. And then once I get it, I don't want to go to this because that's called tone compression. Once I get it to the point where it's right about at tone compression, I'll increase the yellows in here. And then I might even add a little bit of that red into there to brighten up that space. And then again, once we have it tapered the way we want to here, we got all the colors we want them to come over to the opacity and drop that opacity there to kind of get a good blend of the best of both worlds. So you can use this as a way to kind of tone down some of those really bright highlights that you get there. And you have two controls for this. I would start with the opacity and then work your way back here into the black slider here. But you can see that this can add almost an atmospheric or color graded effect to even highlight areas that we would see inside of a landscape image, very similar to what we would see in these hotspots on a portrait. Now, I do know that you could possibly try to do some type of luminosity mask in order to make a selection for that highlight and do something similar with a curve. But in all my practices that I've tried to come up with a way to help people with hot spots on portrait images, I have not seen a way that works better than selective color. It's very simple, very easy to use. You just have to know and understand what you're doing with those absolute values and how to mix in good skin tone complexion using the sliders. This selective color adjustment layer is extremely versatile. If you want to see how I use it in landscape images to make foliage better and actually make the colors pop with beautiful separation for your greens, go ahead and click this video right here. If you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. I like to take difficult things in Photoshop and make them seemingly simple so you can use them in your workflow today. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this. I do sincerely appreciate it.